Hello and welcome to another edition of BuzzFeed Unsolved Postmortem, a show where we answer your most pressing questions about the most recent episode of BuzzFeed Unsolved, which was Alexander Livinenko. All the questions we're answering today came from you guys via our BuzzFeed Unsolved Facebook page and our BuzzFeed Unsolved Instagram page, as well as the BuzzFeed Unsolved Network. Uh, Fun! Video. Subscribe! On YouTube. Yep. It's the new network. You gotta subscribe, otherwise we'll kill ya. I won't do that. But We're not yeah, going to do that. We'll be disappointed. We'll be disappointed. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's start on YouTube. Yeah. This comes from uh, Louisa Phillips. Postmortem in England, our secondary school curriculum for chemistry is to study radioactivity. We had to study this case. Uh, Sorry. For an insight on the public's views, many people believe he was poisoned by the cup, and there are security camera recordings from the bar which show the men acting suspicious, and with our current situation with the poisoning a few months ago, our government and public believe that Russia are killing their traitors. They didn't teach us about poison in high school. Yeah, they didn't teach me much in school. Were you always in the back with your shades on, like smoking a cigarette and telling the yeah, teacher to exactly, fuck off? Yeah, it was exactly like that, and I had hey, my Hey, kick hat, rocks, teach! And I had turned back like this, like, <laughs> boing! <laughs> And meanwhile, I was always in the front of the class like, Oh, do you want an apple? I know the answer. No. <laughs> Why won't anyone go to prom with me? Check out the nerd up front. Look how much he cares. What a loser. <laughs> I just want to be smart. <laughs> oh, my God. Is that, does that answer your question, uh, Louisa? Oh, wait a second. She didn't really, didn't have a really ask a question. It was just, just, hey, here's what it's like in the UK. Cool. That's cool that she, they do that. Let's uh, take it over to Gramtown, Ocean Man 232. First of all, I love the name. This guy. Where is this? Oh, oh Gramtown, okay. Ocean yes, Man yes, 232. Yeah. I saw it. I saw Can it. you imagine that guy out there? He's like, let me put my board back. Oh, quick, got a question for the boys. He says, yo, crap. Wonder if it's too late to be in the postmortem. You know what? It's not. <laughs> I love you, it. You made it. You made it, Ocean Man. Please check in for, for the rest of the uh, season. Absolutely. Big fan of what you do. Big yeah. fan of your work. Big fan of Ocean Big Man. Big fan of your work. We got to follow that guy. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's, let's, go go to, 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 let's go back to Facebook. Oh, let's go to or Facebook. Let's go to Facebook. Yeah, yeah. This comes from uh, Danielle Pininger. For postmortem, so assuming that Lugavoy and Kofton did poison Litvinenko, wouldn't they have substantial poisoning too? Judging by how many people were tested for poisoning from just traces, I imagine they would have radiation poisoning too, if there was that much of it. That's something I consider too, but I'm, I gotta imagine they must have give them, given them some kind of antidote or some kind of like, is that how that works? I, I think our ignorance is really gonna shine It's gonna really come through again. here, yeah. I don't know if there's an antidote to that. There must be something that like you do after to, to lessen the effects of radiation poisoning. Cause like if they had found this earlier, they must, must have been able to save this guy. Or is it one of those things where like you're poisoned with it, you're donezo? I think once you have a certain amount of exposure to it, you're donezo. Then how did they not get contaminated? Um, well, I, it depends. I, if it was contained in some sort of- Like a little teapot? I don't know about a special little teapot. What if it was I like, a, know. like a... I know Livinenko, if he, obviously if he ingested it, then you have poisonous radiation in, in your body, you. you're done for. So it's possible they had some radiation poisoning. Possible, yeah. But they didn't take any sips of that funny little teapot. That funny little tea. And uh, yeah. they're still breathing. Here's from Imo Duffield. Do you not think he could have just realized he was dying and was like, fuck it, time to implicate everyone I hate, and that subsequently biased the investigation? Love you boys, hashtag Shaniac. That was actually theory three in the episode. Yeah. Um, sure, I, it's, it's possible. He seems like a man of integrity though. Yeah, I mean. Uh, I put that in here because I wanted to kind of defend his reputation. Yeah, I, I would say a guy who uh, outed the uh, inner workings of a corrupt organization obviously doesn't really care about his own well-being that much. Um, he, he didn't make that stuff up, or at least I don't think he did. Seemed fairly selfless. Yeah, I mean, it seems like he had the right intentions all along the way. I would like to think that he wouldn't just throw some bullshit at the wall at the end of his life. Unless he was just playing the long game. That's a long con. If you knew you were gonna die, would you just start just tossing out accusations? Would you be like, yeah, it was Shane? Uh, no, I'd, I'd probably binge all the TV series I wanted to before I died. That's and, all you do? Yeah. What what series are, what do you gotta get to still? I never saw Lost. And Lost I feel is like good. it's one of those things I should start. Yeah, um, it's very good. Never started The Wire. The Wire's also, great. Deadwood, another Deadwood show. Deadwood, also good. Wow, you've got a lot of TV. To yeah, see, so I, maybe I should just get into a life-threatening situation, or one, one that would threaten my life over a, a period of time where I knew I was gonna die, and then I would just watch all these shows. The last decade of my life, I'm not even gonna be here. I'm you're gonna just be, gonna be a floating head. Yeah, I'll just, you're be just like, gonna be. 
<laughs> oh, just having the time of my life. And this comes from Esmerda on YouTube. I heard somewhere that the Russians chose polonium for the poison because in Russia, they didn't have the tech to detect it at the time. The alpha radiation that polonium emits is powerful, but has a tiny range. <laughs> can't even penetrate human skin. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little under the weather today. Uh, can't even penetrate human skin, but can wreak havoc from within. So it can't be picked up by Geiger counters. There's a lot of parentheticals oh, in this question. interesting. That are, I don't, I'm not sure. Okay. There's, there's so many parentheses in this question. Are there sub-parentheticals? Mm, many. Love that, love that. Many. Uh, they probably figured it out, figured it would be the perfect crime as no one would be able to identify the cause of death. Apparently, they were unaware that the Brits did have the technology to detect, uh, to detect polonium. Spies are fun, huh? So this might actually shed some light on as, as to why the two perpetrators, alleged perpetrators, uh, were fine. Because if it cannot penetrate the human skin, yeah, it has the fact that he ingested it, he's... No, he's bad. Bad news for him. The other guys are fine. Yeah, yeah. They can we, be juggling uh, uh, that stuff. We just answered a hacky sack with it. Yeah, you can do whatever you want. You can rub it on your face. Yeah, mm. like this. It's not gonna penetrate. Like a nice bomb. Just don't get it on the. Don't get it on the. Don't lips. just put it in your lips. You're done. Yeah. <laughs> Dead now. Keep it out of your mouth. You're all good. Yeah. Uh, we just answered a question with a question. With a question, which is normally frowned upon. I feel like yeah, you shouldn't well, answer I questions with questions. Yeah, yeah. Here's from Instagram, Laura Jukes. As a British person, I'm so happy you're looking at some cases from here. Please do more. Also, so I can hear you mispronounce all our funny place names, please try and say, and she gives us two words. I want you to take a crack at them first. Uh, uh, Worcester? Worcester. 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 And? and? Leo Mincer. <laughs> you're just dropping that T there. Yeah. Leo Mincer. Leo Mincer. I, I, I think I'm going to go with Worcester. Mm. I'm trying to remember, like, Whenever I see British names now, since we went to the UK... You know they're not pronounced in a reasonable way. Well, I mean, also, like, I imagine them said with the same intonation and cadence of that guy who announces the names on the tube. Like, oh. Leicester Steve, Paddington Steve. Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. like, yeah, that's how I was trying to pronounce it. I think it's it. Worcester and Lemonster, maybe. Lemonster Station. Lemonster. Yeah, I can see that, yeah. Lemonster. Worcester. Leo, Leo Mincer. It's like whoosh, it's, it's that special sauce you put on stuff. Oh, like, like yeah, 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 Wooster sauce. What, what are you, <laughs> Wooster sauce? Worcestershire you get the Wooster sauce. sauce on that. Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire sauce. sauce. That's Worcestershire sauce. What the fuck is happening right now? Anyway, that was fun. Uh, yeah, <laughs> the Britain's fun. It was fun to do uh, our ghost episodes there, too. So we've done some stuff about you before. We have. Yeah, we, we, we were there. Yeah, we, we went to you. It was great. Yeah. Maria Teresa Rodriguez. Yeah, this comes from Facebook. <laughs> Yeah, I have a question. Sorry it's not about the episode. If you're both stuck on an abandoned island, what three items would you want to have with you? Would you like to have with you? And why? Love your network. Hashtag Bugara. Hashtag love you too, Shane. I always love them when someone puts either Shaniac or Bugara. They... Hashtag love you too, Ryan. Hashtag love you too, Shane. <laughs> I appreciate it. It's very thoughtful. That is kind of you to say. Um, what three items, Shane? This is tricky. If I said, oh, my Blu-ray collection of the Mission Impossible series, yeah. that would be worthless because I don't have a television. You don't have a television. You can't plug your thing in your mm. sand or a tree. Maybe the novelization of the Mission Impossible series? Okay, you... If that's a thing. That's, okay, I'm clearly seeing what your priority is right now. Maybe it's out there. Okay, yep. Um, some kind of big hat for just to block the sun. And then um, and some floss. Okay. Yeah, it would be good to floss, yeah. Dental hygiene is always, like, important. Or maybe a uh, lighter. No, floss. Yeah, floss. You gotta have that floss. I was a boy scout. I can start a fire. What are you bringing? Oh, let's see. <clears throat> I would probably want to bring some kind of, like, a uh, device that could filtrate salt water into drinking water. Okay. I'm sure I that... I think that is... might be hard to do. I mean, there is a life straw. I don't know if that works with salt water. What the fuck is a life straw? You don't have a life straw? What's a life straw? A life straw is a very cheap straw. It costs like 10 bucks. You can get it at REI. Um, it's good to take when you hike or could potentially get lost somewhere because you just dip it in a river, you drink it. It has a very effective filter in it so you can drink river water without uh, getting any kind of bacteria. I gotta get, I gotta get my hands on a life yeah, straw. Yeah, they're super cheap. You also, I just one. love the image of me just plopping down on a little river bank. Yeah. Just plop and just put a little straw on a yeah, river. I have one at home. And for people like me that don't know what a life straw is, they'd be like, what's he doing? That guy just put his 
it was a little straw in the river, like it was like a milkshake, like Daniel Day Lewis. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Good. I love that. Yeah. I gotta get me a life. I'll you take get, a life. So yeah, life. I guess I'll bring a life. Life straw. I'll take a life straw. Yeah. Um, let's see what else. Oh, I bring a plane. That's good. Yeah. That way yeah. I could fly off the island. Or like a like one of those green laser pointers, so you could point at ships or something. I'll bring a life straw, a plane, and Captain Soli. Okay. You're bringing Cap. I bring the Cap with me. And after I've had enough island getaway time, be like, all right, cat, fire it up. I'm ready to All go he home. ever did was crash a plane, though. I'm sure he could uncrash a plane. I'm a little under the weather. My brain's not working that well right now. Uncrash a plane. <laughs> all right, folks, in about 10 minutes, we should gonna, be uncrashing this plane. Yeah. <laughs> Runway looking clear, clear sky, about ready to uncrash. Gramtown. Uh, Claire CF. Uh, Man, you guys are totally getting killed. Uh, I'll, well, I think we'll be fine. I, I don't, I, I make all my coffee at home. Yeah. And you know what, if we get killed for the cause, so be it. That's how much I care about justice. Oh, wow. I don't care about it, so yeah. I will not be free. I don't, I'm just kidding. I'll I don't care about justice pissed. at all. I'll be don't like, kill this me. sucks. Don't kill me. I didn't even have a chance to watch Lost. Or do LSD. I think you, <laughs> or both at the same time. <laughs> I don't think I could ever do acid. I just no, like, I don't my, want my, to. My imagination is too vivid. I don't vivid. want to. Even if I'm an old man, I feel like. Leave that door shut. You leave those doors shut. I don't shut. want a door open in my mind. It's bad. Lock it. Yeah. Uh, lunatic. For postmortem. So what you're trying to tell me is that Lugovoy, one of the guys being blamed for Livinyenko's death, might I add, was also the one to say that Berezovsky murdered Livinyenko. Hmm, something doesn't sound right, and I'm not just talking about that glowing green tea. Hashtag don't trust the tea. Hashtag it's poison, my dude. Hashtag Bukar for life. Hashtag sorry, Shane, you're still great. Once again, reassuring you. Yeah, thank you. I mean, it is very telling that the only alternate theories that someone didn't do something come from the person that's being accused. So, you're not much to read between the lines there. Yeah, pretty, pretty blatant. Pretty blatant. Uh, still unsolved, though. Not saying he did it, no reason to kill me. Yeah, I saw a lot of people saying this seems pretty, they, someone had said like a lot of the cases this season seem pretty yeah. solved. We got this one, we got collar bomb. I guess there has been an interesting trend of like, we, we know part of it, but there's still a ton of an unanswered questions. Did you go into this season thinking that, that that would be kind of a theme with some episodes or did it just kind of turn out that way? It just kind of turned out that way. Sometimes I just, I just. Uh, you happen upon genius. Yeah, I just happen upon, I'm just, I'm just free flowing, man. I'm yeah. just like a, a delicate little lily floating in a gentle lily pond. Just floating around. What does that mean? I'm just floating around, baby. I'm floating. Like this. This is weird. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next question. Allie wasn't here. I introduced my grandmother to BuzzFeed Unsolved and she's more Shane than Shane. So thanks, now I have to throw away another grandma. <laughs> hashtag Bugara, hashtag Shania. Jesus Christ. What does that mean? What are you gonna do to your grandmother? I'm assume, I mean, this is, throw there's away no way to grandma. analyze this one out being morbid. I'm gonna assume her other grandma may have passed away, right? Throw away another grandma, like they cremated and then they just dump it down the trash chute? God, that's a weird way to describe a funeral too. <sighs> Gotta go throw away grandma throw today. Away grandma. Gotta throw away grandma on Sunday. <laughs> I guess in a sense, that's you are throwing her away in technically. The, in the ground. You're putting yeah. them in the ground. Well, don't throw away your grandmother. She's yeah. probably a nice lady. Uh, <laughs> Wait, and obviously, she has a brain. <laughs> Shout out to your grandmother. Send send her this. Give her a little smooch from. <laughs> Sometimes you know when the party's over and you got to end it. The party's not a party's. Party's raging, man. Okay. Ryan, what's coming up next week? Or this week. <laughs> so we have a case that was featured on uh, Unsolved Mysteries, uh, a show that I watched growing up and that got uh, the uh, investigators, or one investigator in that show, in some uh, murky water. Uh oh. It's a very weird case. You are, I mean, you mostly, I'm really not involved with a lot of this, but you're really putting your life on the line this season. I'm just relaying the information. I'm not digging any deeper. I'm not going out to interview people. He says that on screen, but once the camera's uh, shut off, he's like, I'm gonna get to the bottom of this. You know, killing, I'm sticking my nose in it. Killing me would, be, would bring you no joy. I mean, it would bring some people some joy. It might. But would it accomplish much? Yeah, probably. Not really. Yeah, a little bit. Um, anyways, look forward to that. Yeah. That does it for this episode of BuzzFeed Unsolved Postmortem. Make sure you watch the episode this Friday and then send in your questions to the BuzzFeed Unsolved Facebook page, the Instagram page, 
or comment on the video directly and maybe you'll be featured on the next post-mortem. Our weekly Q&A concluded. I now welcome you to the part of the show we call the Hot Dog, a hot dog saga commissioned by Ryan Steven Bergara, written by me and adored by every single viewer. And if you don't like it, you can kiss my apple taters. At the Onion Station Space Buffet Resort and Spa, Brave Mike Soup, Incredible Gene, who is absolutely French fries, and Garst, the duplicitous peach, all bask in the calming pink glow of the zero-G lazy river. Hey, you guys ever think about what happens after we die? N nah. I do. I think it's random, like a slot machine. You might become a ghost. Whoa, scary! I might turn into yogurt. Garth might go straight into the devil's red hell and suffer for all eternity while maggots crawl through his stinking body. Who can say? <laughs> okay, well, I hope I become an angel. Yeah, <laughs> like with big golden wings. They're even more beautiful than my Pop Pop's eyebrows. Uh, you know, Garth, maybe it's all this relaxing, but I honestly can't even remember why I was angry at you in the first place. He and his father drugged and kidnapped us and lured us here for reasons unknown. Only to, er, for reasons known only to the Dark Master. <laughs> you know what, guys? I, I don't even care. We're in a kick-ass lazy river and I couldn't give two pickles. Frankly, I don't care either. This place has such a calming influence on my stern temperament. I feel as giddy as a chowder. Oh, make way for the juggernaut! Dr. Gundis, a large, very relaxed chicken, floats past the gang. Whoa, howdy, fella! Well, aren't you just the king of the river? Ha <laughs> ha, ain't that the truth? Something about this place just makes a person feel like royalty. Say, Featherman, you look familiar to me. Huh? Hey, now that you mention it, so do you. And the little blue guy! Those dog tags you got. You ever see service? Well, feels like a lifetime ago, but yeah, I think so. Oh, thanks for your service! Did you ever assassinate the Pope? You know what? I did, I think. Bernie? Soup! Whoa, whoa, the venerable Dr. Gundis. <laughs> Sorry about my dad being such a dick all the time and for following his orders without question. <laughs> Oops. You know what? I had a lot of rage in me, but now we're here bathed in this wonderful warm light. And all that darkness, well, it just feels little. And the cocktails here are so cheap. Well, I'll be canned. I truly can't believe it. Ernie Gundis in the flesh. This is my good friend Gene, a talented French fries who's from the future. I secretly find his positive attitude very charming. Whoa, nice to meet you. You're a big part of our whole mission. Or were, I think. Now we're just so chilled out here, it's like, hey, let's swim, you know? Read my mind, Gene. No, oh, choo-choo, here comes the Joblet trolley, and this little chugster is drunk as a truffle pig. Joblet and Smeech float into the river. Whoa, it's the gang. Hey, it's you. I hate you, and I'm glad you look all fucked up. But I got nothing but chill vibes for you right now. Namaste or whatever. Who are you and what have you done with that old crankpot, Mike Soup? Oh, LMAO, Gene. Yeah, funny as hell. Love this guy. I love you, Gene. Oh, this ends now. Finally, floating into the party. It's Maisie. She does not look happy. Oh, hey, everybody. Man, so good to see you all. Same! Same. Anyway, I had something to tell you, but I... Huh. You know, after that orientation we just went through, I just... Whew, I just want to chill till I'm dead. Ooh, ahoy! A jovial hamburger floats into the party. My precious, wonderful JVIPs! The Space Buffet Pasta Parade is sh is st sharding. <laughs> is starting shortly. It's how we chill everybody out before the weekend's around here. We've reserved a place for you all on our most esteemed float. Bring your new pals here, too! Ha ha! Anyway, I'll be seeing you soon! Oh, I love parades! Oh my god, me too. Say, just a quick thought, everybody. Uh, I never got to download- I never totally got the download on why the Dark Master wanted you here. Should we be concerned about that? Uh, I'm a little worried, but only a little. Same. Well, then everything's fine! Best vacation ever! Will Maisie and company enjoy the rest of their vacation? Is Weldon chill? What's going on with the bad guy? All this and more next time on the Hot Dogger. Showdown at the Space Buffet, only on Bun. <laughs>